Welcome to Five Fires YouTube. Today I'm going to be talking about breaking news coming out of Disneyland. Another lightning lane? <laughs> so, the world has gone into chaos. And I'm like, what is going on? I felt like everything kind of went down like 6 a.m. California time. Uh, I saw Twitter just kind of going crazy because the news kind of started over there and then it leaked its way over here. Uh, this is specifically Disneyland. Uh, we talked about this not too long ago. Shout out to Blog Mickey for, you know, give us giving us the insight of what could come. And it finally did come. Lightning Lane Premier Pass. <laughs> Lightning Lane Premier Pass. Um, this is essentially a more expensive version of Lightning Lane. In today's video, we're going to go over all the details. What is this? How does it work? What does it cost? That's what we're going to do. We're going to go step by step uh, and uh, give this analysis and <laughs> read. A convenient way to save time in line. A Lightning Lane Premier Pass allows one-time re-entry. Uh, One-time entry to each available Lightning Lane experience in both of Disneyland Resort theme parks to enjoy at your leisure that day. Valid park admission required, subject to very limited availability. <clears throat> so at this point in time, who's already using Lightning Lane before this thing even comes? We have... <sighs> these, these names are all so ugly... Single pass, single pass lightning lane, which used to be called individual lightning lane, you know, like Rise of the Resistance, uh, Radiator Spring Racers, those are the ones that are still using it. Uh, and then there's the multi pass lightning lane, <laughs> and that's the one that you get that has like Thunder Mountain, uh, you know, space and all that, it has the big jumbo, uh, of that. Um, and now we're going to add Lightning Lane Premier Pass to all of that. And at the same time, a lot of people were mentioning to me on Twitter that it's not just those three that are going to be using Lightning Lane. Uh, it's also going to be used by DOS. DOS is still using Lightning Lane. So you have four groups, one Lightning Lane. Lightning Lanes are already kind of crazy. Uh, beginning October 23rd, Disneyland Resort will begin piloting the new rollout of Lightning Lane Premier Pass with very limited quantities and available. Um, how it works. <laughs> how does it work, Disney? Get one-time entry to each available Lightning Lane attraction for one day, uh, including top attractions available on Single Pass. So, Rise is included in this Premiere, ride the Lightning Lane attraction you want when you want. You don't need to choose a specific arrival. That's very intriguing. I like that. You want to go to space? You just start off with space. You don't have to actually book a time to go to space. You just walk over there. Here's my Premiere. And then after that, you go to uh, Matterhorn because <laughs> that's what you want to do. It's like you could just, you have more freedom. You're not barred by the whole two every two hours you get a lightning lane or whatever. Uh, all right, let's keep going. Enjoy photo perks. <laughs> sure, get a limited downloads of Disney Photo Pass. Uh, purchase and use Lightning Lane Premier Pass. How to purchase it? How do we purchase it? Uh, October 23rd at Disneyland Resort will begin piloting, blah, blah, blah. Lightning Lane Premier Pass can be purchased via Disneyland app up to two days in advance of your park visit, starting at 7 a.m. Pacific time. Wow. So this could be sold out two days before. Before you begin, please make sure your whole party, how to purchase. All right. You just go to the app. Uh, here we go. Price. Price Lightning Lane Premier Pass will be priced at four hundred per person per day for park visitings through December thirty first, uh, beginning twenty twenty five. Pricing will vary. Date and demand 
within a $300 to $400 range. What? I gotta read that again. Wow. That's kind of crazy. Lightning Lane Premier Pass will be priced at $400 per person per day for park visits through December 31st. So from right, I guess the 23rd to the end of December, 400 a person. Beginning 2025, prices will vary by date and demand within $300 to $400 range. So $300 is when all the construction walls are everywhere. <laughs> Big refurbs are happening. Uh, tips for using this pass. Okay. Start your day early. We recommend getting to the theme parks early as soon as they open. Why do I even need lightning lane at that point? I'm rope dropping. I do as many rides as I want. Visit both Disneyland theme parks. You can use your lightning lane premier pass for one time access to each available lightning lane entrance at Disneyland and California Adventure for one day during regular park hours. So they're really trying to sell. You need a park hopper. You that's how you're gonna get the most value out of this premiere. Is you just want to do a ton of rides, but you want to have the park hopper. Lightning Lane is non-refundable. Uh huh. Limit of one Lightning Lane entry per attraction per day. Lightning Lane passes and attractions may vary by date. Okay, yeah, because rides close down uh okay uh wow um this is crazy lightning lane i love how they, they're just throwing in this disneyland resort vip tour so the way things are going uh things have got very expensive at the disneyland resort we recently just had price increase on tickets for like a park hoppers in the range of 270, I think it was, or 280 during this time that we're, we're still remaining in 2024. Uh, Magic Keys, some of the Magic Keys went up 20%. Uh, the highest tier now is 17, almost $1,800. Uh, and now they hit us with this lightning lane thing. Um, I don't know how they're going to do it. I don't know how they're going to do it. And when I say I don't know how they're going to do it is just the fact that like there's so much congestion already happening with just that one lightning lane. You know, when I first heard all this like premiere, I was like, maybe they get their own line or something. Like they go through exit. You just walk right in. It's like a VIP experience. That is not the case. They're asking you to still wait in regular lightning lane line. You essentially have a ticket to each one, but at the same time, uh, you're still bound by the speed of lightning lane lines. And some of these lightning lane lines, now that we're in this October time, the, the mid to end into Christmas, some of these lightning lane lines are going to be kind of crazy. <laughs> oh, man. And I wonder how it plays out with Haunted right now. Is, is Haunted listed on there? You know, Haunted does have Lightning Lane, but uh, currently it's in uh, the whole virtual queue thing. Uh, Haunted Mansion it has two stars. At this time, Haunted Mansion Holiday is only available via virtual queue. Wow. So, yeah, you, you cannot use it. Pirates of the Caribbean, Caribbean is temporarily available as Lightning Lane attraction. So that might leave at some point. Uh, is Tiana's on here? No Tiana. Damn. So I'm out here paying $400. I can't even do Haunted. I can't do Tiana's. This is like the cool stuff happening right now. What about DCA? Is there anything weird at DCA? Yeah, DCA has all the rides. At least as of right now. There's no construction on these things. Um, Wow. Well, that's that's something to know. I, I didn't even think of it that far. Um, but like I'm saying, we have multi-lane, multi-lightning lane, single-pass lightning lane, premier-pass lightning lane, DOS. 
and then a standby. Wow. Wow, this is getting crazy. So the big talk that has been happening that I've seen, uh, a lot of people are like, well, this all makes sense if we get rid of Lightning Lane for the lower tier. Um, so no more individual, no more multi-pass Lightning Lane. The only one that it will, will exist is that high premium one of 400, 300 to 400. Uh, and then at that point, I get it. That makes sense. That's kind of how all the other theme parks roll, you know, from Knott's. Knott's front of the line is hell of expensive. It's like $200. Uh, on, on like these busier times that we're in now, we're more in the pink now. Uh, same thing with Universal. Express ain't cheap. It's like $200 in itself too. Um, so Disneyland offering this more premier. Uh, is it going to weed out the lower lightning lanes and just get rid of them? To only have the high one. That would make sense to me. Are they trying to phase out that lower lightning lane? A lot of people are asking that. I personally, I say no. Because Disney is monetizing one line all these different ways. Individual lightning lane, single, or yeah, single pass lightning lane, multi-pass lightning lane, and then premier pass lightning lane. <laughs> <laughs> They're monetizing lines three times, three different ways. I don't think they get rid of the lower lightning lane. Uh, from a guest experience, um, this is not affecting regular day guests. At least I, I don't feel like it would. Uh, it is affecting lightning lanes though. But man, things are getting crazy. Price increases. Uh, and currently Magic Key is not being for sale. And, uh, you know, losing entertainment, things not being open. Like right now, we don't have the train. It's been a while since we've had the train. Um, we haven't had Tiana's, you know, that it took all the way to November to open that one. Um, it's just, it's just like hard. Prices keep skyrocketing. And uh, are the experiences skyrocketing with that? I would say at this point in time, they're not. Uh, but maybe things get a lot better in the 70th, which is next year. You know, 70th of Disneyland. I, I feel like it'll be very special. But, uh, yeah, people are not happy. People are not happy. I posted on my Instagram, posted on Twitter. Uh, I I feel what Disneyland is doing, they're really trying to make as much money as they can from Theme Park Division. Uh, and soon enough... You know, I feel like this wrath is going to start leading into Disney Cruise Line. Because, uh, you know, the one thing that's really not making money, Disney Plus. And that's where they put all their eggs in that basket. Uh, because they thought it was going to be this giant profitability. It really hasn't been. It's been a giant billion dollar loser. <laughs> oh, man. And if I'm not mistaken, I keep, I keep hearing people tell me this. That their Disney Plus is ending soon. Because it was attached to like their Verizon. So imagine how many subscribers Disney's going to lose when the whole Disney Plus Verizon deal goes away. I feel like there's a lot of people that are just like, I don't need Disney Plus. What are they What are they putting on Disney Plus? That's new. Nothing. Uh, so what? where do they get the money from? They're going to get the money from the theme parks. And uh, theme parks start thriving. At least here in Disneyland, these things are packed. I've been at the parks uh, the last couple yeah, two, three weeks, it's been very busy. Very, very busy at Disneyland. Uh, so I get it. They got to make money somehow. We have big expansions on the horizon with the new parking structure that's going to come on the harbor side. Uh, Avatar Land, wherever the hell they want to put it. Coco Land, Avenger Campus expansion. There's these big moves that are happening. So I get it. They, they got to get money. They got to get money from somewhere. Uh it's just uh, Disney's doing all these back to back to back. And they're like, but paint the night. Just forget about all this. Paint the night. I don't, I don't think paint the night's working anymore. <laughs> I feel like the paint the night uh, uh, feeling of happy. To, I feel like it's gone away right now because, uh, yeah, things are getting dirty. Dirty, dirty. Lightning lanes, lightning lanes. It's all about it's all, these things. are. It's like they're marketing or not marketing, but it's like they're monetizing a worse experience for the everyday guest, the regular guest, because like Lightning Lane 
in all reality, is making standby horrible. And since they keep adding these tiers now, and all the people that use Lightning Lane, that those can start getting stacked up too, and that's a bad experience. So now you get bad experience in Lightning Lane, bad experience in standby. Whew. And the parks aren't getting any slower. I keep saying it's only getting busier and busier. There's no slow times anymore. Uh, I think this makes sense if they get rid of the lower Lightning Lanes. Uh, which does suck because then it's like, man, I got to dish out $400. But I feel like if that happened, Lightning Lane itself would get used a lot less and standby will go up and be quicker because the line's not being cut off so much. Remember the good days when there was no Fast Pass, no Lightning Lane, no nothing? At the very beginning when uh, Disneyland opened pre-pandemic, literally Space Mountain was never 20 minutes. Never. And none of the rides were 20 minutes uh, because only standby existed. Standby by itself, uh, it's just, it's good for guest experience, but Disney needs to make the money. They got to make the money, man. They ain't making the money from the movies and shows, that's for sure. But, uh, man, I, I, I am definitely not somebody who would buy a $400 Lightning Lane. Uh, I'm a local I think this is really targeted for those families. You know, they're coming one time out of the year. If you want to have the best experience possible, they're rich. They got enough budget. Why not? That's who this is for. This is not for the everyday local. Not by any means. All right, everybody. I would love to hear your thoughts. Is this a good idea, a bad idea? Do you think a regular Lightning Lane exists a year from now? Or are they going to phase it out? And if they phase it out, is it a good idea? I would love to hear from you. I want to hear your guys' opinions. Post in the comments of this video and uh, let's start a conversation. Smash that like button. We're firing it down. <laughs>